The NBA will resume the season at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. For players on the 22 invited teams, life as they know it is about, well, let's just say it's going to be a little different. Maria Taylor takes us inside the bubble. They're calling it the bubble. But think of it as a camp, a basketball camp, with the biggest, fastest, baddest campers in the world. They won't dine in mess halls, but will have a dedicated Disney culinary team. Three meals a day, four on game day. They have personal trainers, but no pets. They won't be sleeping in cabins, but in a resort. Teams will be assigned to one of three deluxe hotels based on current standings in each conference. That's right, there are still levels to this. Barbers, manicurist, pedicurist, and hair braiders will be available. There will be ping pong, but no doubles. Fishing, video gaming, and golf, and excursions to Disney's Animal Kingdom to enjoy. But this will not be a joy ride. The schedule will be tight, the rules strict, the protocols strictly enforced. Regular coronavirus testing, mass worn when off the court, no exceptions. Want to leave campus? That's cool, but there's a mandatory quarantine period upon return. Now for the business at hand. Teams will have seven courts to practice on. Want to get up some extra shots or an open run? That's by appointment only. Players want to take in the action and scout the competition. Oh, it can be done. But once they go live, each team has eight games to finalize seedings for the playoffs. Oh, and of course, no crowds. But it will still be intense. It will still be inspired. There may not be fans, but there's always fire when the best in the world square off. The NBA distilled at Disney World, eating, sleeping, and balling for the game's top prize and for pride inside the bubble. I love that. Thanks, Maria Taylor, for bringing us that. We now welcome in our NBA insider, Brian Windhorst. Okay, just to recap, Wendy, the Nuggets closed their facility this past Saturday because of concerns with the coronavirus, and then three unnamed Pelicans players have tested positive per their GM, David Griffin. What more can you tell us about all of this as is happening? Well, you know, the NBA last week disclosed that 16 players tested positive just last week. Um, so we knew that those guys were out there uh, without question. But the fact that guys have started testing positive in the facilities, uh, both players and staff members, is obviously concerning. And I would say that a week ago, as I talked to executives, players, and, and staff members, that there was a concern about this, but they were all pretty you know, anxious to go, which is why we haven't seen many players and other people pull out so far. A week later, it's really changing a little bit. Not only the numbers in Florida, but also more positive testing at these, uh, uh, you know, at these uh, facilities. Plus, we've had some positive tests in other bubbles, such as on the PGA Tour. You know, it's another week before the teams start leaving to go to Florida. The confidence level in that in this, this next week is going to be fragile. The NBA believes once we get down to Orlando in that bubble that things will be safe and that they will do everything possible and that this will work. But getting to that bubble is proving to be very nervous, nervy. Yeah, and listen, there is 101 pages of protocols, right, to protect them when they're there, but there are also concerns about that Orlando bubble, uh, particularly when it comes to the coaches, right? You've got five of the 22 teams head coaches that are 60 or older. What are you hearing on this front? See, this is something that the league has not commented on yet. When I checked with them, they said it is an ongoing medical review process. Every single person who's going to go into the bubble not only has to pass a, a coronavirus test, but they get their medical records reviewed by a three-physician panel, also by their team physician. And they can be flagged. And it says right there in the protocol that they can be barred from going. And there are a number of staff and coaches who have not been cleared. David Griffin, 
just mentioned, Alvin Gentry has not been cleared. They are supposed to submit their list of the 35 people going for a team tomorrow, and yet we have no information of how many coaches and staff tested positive, and we have no clearance list of the coaches. This is something that is out there. It is going to be, become an issue in the next couple of days, and there is a legal process here. This isn't just a medical issue, but a legal issue, because if you bar somebody just for being a certain age, it is a EEOC violation, and the agent for Alvin Gentry and Mike D'Antoni has already threatened legal action. This is a lot of things going on. Everybody just wants to get to the bubble, but again, the process to get there is just really proving difficult.